What's up guys, it's Punchy, and today we got a pretty substantial Deep Woken update with a few things that I want to check out and I think that you'll enjoy. I'll do my best to cover most of the things dropping today briefly, and I'm excited to show you what's up. Apologies for my voice, I'm still feeling a bit sick, but regardless, let's get right into it. Something weird that happened again is the rework of Just Karita M1 animations. For those who have been in the Deep Woken community for a while now, this has already happened and now it's the second time time that they have been redone. In current day Deep Woken, here's what they look like before the update, and here's what's new. So you can see the animation is a bit different, and I'm unsure how this will work in the current game, so I assume this was done to make Just Karita more readable, but at least we also have a visible swing trail for this fist style. Today, we received a new mantra for Gale Breath that's pretty exciting, introducing the one-star mantra Twister Kicks. This kick attack is pretty basic, it's a classic spin move, we sweep the floor with a bunch of swipes dealing solid damage and a good posture amount, and I also really enjoy how this looks. I think it applies good pressure and should be viable in combat. Another fairly new mantra, Ice Carve, has also received a brand new combat spark. This mantra at a base level is a very close range attack that allows multi-hit ice damage with multiple up-close slices. Well, with this update, we harness our true Beyblade potential with the Ice Carve's round spark. Winding up and eventually spinning, the Ice Carve round spark allows the Frost Straw user to deal fast damage while traveling at light speed. It's pretty goofy, I'm not gonna lie about that, but this seems like a really fun option to approach approach targets while applying pressure. Moving on to a huge addition, we've gained the ability to finally break our oaths. So this may sound confusing, but trust me, it's pretty simple to understand once I show you in game. Oaths are a huge investment, a build defining class that grants very specific and exclusive combat advantages that stand apart from the rest. I won't speak for everyone, but I think it's safe to say that this single choice of an oath defines your deep oaken character more than anything else. Anyway. What happens if you don't really like your oath? Well, in the past, you could interact with Yun Shul down in the depths as an oathless player to break your vow and eventually gain the option to get an oath. Now this is possible with every single oath in Deep Oaken, and it's very special for each one. When interacting with Yun Shul and choosing the Relinquish Oath option, choice number three, we can remove our oath with specific dialogue for each oath. A warning message will display stating that you may potentially close off your former oath, you know, forever, and yes, this is no joke. Some oaths can be regained after becoming an oath breaker, but some may not, so be careful. On to the dialogue. For Oathless, it's much of the same, but Cerulean allows you to re-embark on your journey and find your true path. Arc Warder's connection to the Arc Suit withers, and it seems like the Ignition Union gets mad for wasting all their precious technology, time, and research money. If you choose to do this, you'll become an enemy of the Ignition Union. Blind Seers awaken to the world once again, no longer immune to the terrors within, so I guess it's like waking up to a nightmare. With Contractor, both Etrus and Mintresa sever their ties with you entirely, and Lord Regent is not happy about this, so don't show up in Etrus tomorrow. Dawnwalkers make an enemy of the Divers as Claris insults your commitment as you retreat back into the dark. For Jet Striker, it's kinda sad because the trainer thought you would be her true rival, but I guess we had to run away from that too. Link Striders finally return to this reality, no longer bound to the limitless potential found beyond. Silent Heart players, you can finally return to the world of Deep Oaken, but it seems like your heart has already been claimed and your build, well, <laughs> your build is probably ruined because you have no mantras. It's definitely going to be a struggle to re-roll your talents into mantras unless you want to do that for your entire existing kit. Star Kindreds are rejected by the Celestial Blood, no longer fit to grasp the stars. With Vision Shaper, the Nest Mine has already claimed you, but you're free to wander and and change your path as usual. The latest oath, Salt Chemist, is kind of funny, I think, because the potions have finally worn off. And finally, for Fade Trimmers, good luck cutting hair because your scissors are no longer bound to you. Like, whatever. So yeah, oath breaking is a real possibility for the future of Deep Oaken, and it's always an option to rework your build if you want to. It's time to move on to some guild changes that I'm really excited to see as Conquest grows closer. Today, we gained some new guild emblems to customize with, and there's a lot of options 
options here that you can play around with if you want to customize your guild. I'm excited to see some new options and this was made by Natoons, one of Deep Orchid's main artists. Alongside these new emblems, if you click on a guild icon of somebody in game, it will promptly tell you the amount of officers and rooms for that specific guild. Additionally, if you're a guild leader, it's also possible to view your guild list to keep track of members and remove players remotely without hopping in game. If you go inside your guild base and open up the, uh, I think it's the guild base menu, you can see this. Moving forward, the visual quality of life isn't over with a few different dynamic display features that you may want to use. Heading on over to our settings tab, we can see two new options. The first option, toggling 3D item icons. You will now see a background image of whatever item you want inside your inventory frames. If you don't want that, however, there is also the option to disable this feature, returning it back to normal. A good balance of both can be found in the second option, listing your 3D icon behavior. So if you set this to hover, you will only see these 3D objects when your mouse is on top of that item, which may be optimal for some players. Finally, revisiting that new category option from last week that separates your tools into different slots, it's easy to minimize or maximize each section to hide unnecessary loot if you don't want, you know, clogging your inventory. I've said this once and I will say it again that Deep Oaken quality of life is always, you know, pretty great. Let's move on to some balancing. I won't talk about everything, but there are a few things here and there that I do want to focus on that I think are important. There's also a huge change to mobility that you might want to check out. Chaining horizontal mobility moves in quick succession reduces how far you can actually go with them, but the debuff does not happen if you hit an enemy with these moves. In short, you can still attack very fast and maintain insane momentum and pressure, but you can't really track star run away as well in combat. Alongside this, there's also been a few changes on top of movement to sliding, which should be less of an issue nowadays. If you're sliding and somebody parries your attack, that parry stun should cancel your slide, so this was made a little bit easier to work with and it was a pretty large issue of running around in circles while sliding and now it should be shut down consistently. Also, sliding on ice has reduced duration and distance even if you have talents that improve your initial slide. Right off the bat, Flame Ballista Spring Spark has been nerfed heavily and this is insanely positive for the overall health of the game. Previously, with this move you could literally fly into the air and stay there safely with ultimately little downside. This was very annoying and incentivized waiting for cooldowns while hiding in the air and you know it never hit anybody. Luckily though, the vertical leap has dropped significantly, nerfing the jump height of this spark. Damage has also been reduced in comparison to the original move. Another mantra that got a decently large hit was a classic option being Exhaustion Strike. So this mantra received a pretty big lag drawback on missing the attack and its hitbox should also be lowered. In theory, Exhaustion Strike will no longer snipe you when facing the opposite direction and now you can punish this mantra after it has been whiffed. Additionally, this is more of a bug fix but now Exhaustion Strike can no longer block break on a transfer of posture and I think that's pretty good. An absolutely awesome rework came to the curse of the Bloodthirsty enchant and previously with this enchant you would deal 10% extra damage on M1s but you would lose HP after missing, you know, any M1. You gotta be careful using this enchant but what's interesting about this change is that by whiffing M1s you no longer lose HP but you lose a bit of stored blood. This is huge because our risk has gone down and to restore blood we can also knock players to get a little bit back. So I'm excited to use this enchant in the future but you gotta give it a shot too. That's about it. If you haven't been on recently it's also a good time to try out Battle Royale which returns every single weekend if you have a squad. You might even see me there if you're lucky. As always if you enjoyed make sure to like and subscribe. I'm always providing exclusive update content and if you want to stay up to date help me out and subscribe. Let's hit 75k. Thanks again it's punching time.